Samsung SDI is attempting to produce solid-state batteries using sulfide-based solid electrolytes. Unlike CATL, which utilizes organics with self-assembly properties prologium, which uses a composite material consisting of oxides and polymers, and factorial, Samsung SDI uses argyrodite, a sulfide-based solid electrolyte. However, this choice makes the production process more challenging due to the material's vulnerability to moisture and the difficulty in reducing interfacial resistance. Nevertheless, sulfide-based electrolytes have a high lithium-ion conductivity and, unlike polymers or composite materials, they do not possess combustibility, allowing for the production of highly efficient solid-state batteries with significantly reduced risk of explosion. However, one of the challenge that needs to be addressed is the potential release of toxic hydrogen sulfide if the battery is damaged and exposed to moisture, which poses a serious health hazard. All right. Let's first take a look at the structure and issues of the widely used lithium-ion batteries before delving into the understanding of the solid-state batteries that Samsung SDI is currently developing. This will likely provide helpful insights for comprehending the advancements being made in solid-state battery technology. The diagram you see represents the structure of the currently widely used lithium-ion batteries. It consists of a cathode and an anode, with a porous polymer separator in between that prevents direct contact between them. These components are immersed in a liquid electrolyte responsible for lithium transport. The anode is composed of graphite material, and in a charged state, as indicated by the red color in the animation, lithium atoms are inserted into the graphite structure. Superficially, as long as there are no defects in the components and the structure remains intact, there seems to be no risk of battery fires caused by explosions, even though the electrolyte is highly volatile. However, during the actual charging and discharging process, unexpected phenomena occur. Especially during low temperature charging or harsh cycling, a phenomenon called dendrite formation can occur. Where lithium ions that should be inserted into the graphite electrode during charging are instead deposited as metallic lithium on the surface of the graphite. Technically, this is referred to as the formation of lithium dendrites on the electrode, which represents the growth of lithium metal from the electrode, similar to the growth of a lightning rod. Unfortunately, the formation of lithium dendrites is an irreversible phenomenon and does not disappear during the discharge process. Moreover, these growing lithium dendrites can penetrate or bypass the porous separator, leading to the cathode side. When this phenomenon occurs severely, it can potentially result in battery explosions. Solid-state batteries were developed as a solution to mitigate such issues. Instead of using a porous polymer separator with relatively low mechanical strength, Solid-state batteries utilize a solid electrolyte as a substitute for the separator. This not only eliminates the risk of explosion associated with volatile liquid electrolytes but also fulfills the role of lithium-ion transport. As a result, the risk of explosions is significantly reduced. Indeed, the challenge lies in the cost aspect. While conventional lithium-ion batteries that utilize polymer separators and liquid electrolytes have simplified production processes and achieved high-speed production, Solid-state batteries face challenges in terms of production efficiency. This is due to the requirement of using sulfide-based solid electrolytes, which are highly unstable in the presence of oxygen and moisture. Additionally, ensuring stable contact between the electrolyte and electrode interface requires the introduction of ultra-high pressure equipment. Furthermore, finding significant advantages in terms of performance compared to conventional secondary batteries has been difficult. Perhaps, in order to overcome such problems, manufacturing an all-solid-state battery with greatly improved energy density by removing the graphite anode material would have been considered as a countermeasure. Polymer separators with weak mechanical strength are also replaced with solid electrolytes, and moreover, liquid electrolytes with high volatility are not used. With the absence of the graphite layer, during battery charging, lithium ions simply need to be reduced to lithium by accepting electrons at the surface of the copper current collector. In the case of charging a solid-state battery without the presence of graphite, lithium ions are expected to uniformly form a lithium metal layer on the copper electrode, akin to an electroplating process. However, unfortunately, this process often results in the formation of an uneven lithium layer and the occurrence of dendrites. Additionally, it has been discovered that even the sulfide-based solid electrolyte, which was believed to prevent dendrite formation and penetration, may not effectively mitigate these issues. To address this issue, both Blue Solutions, who pioneered the mass production of polymer-based quasi-solid-state batteries in the past, 
and many recent companies declaring mass production of solid-state batteries have adopted the approach of inserting lithium foils in place of graphite. By inserting a sufficient amount of lithium foil between the copper current collector and the solid electrolyte, even when the battery is fully discharged. A portion of the lithium remains in the form of a foil. This approach allows for the plating of lithium ions not onto the physically distinct copper but onto the remaining lithium foil, mitigating the aforementioned issues to a significant extent. Recently, a number of methods have emerged to prevent dendrite formation by inserting a boron-containing material between the lithium foil and the electrolyte interface. Therefore, the remaining problem is the productivity and price of lithium metal foil, which is difficult to handle and has poor mechanical properties. However, Samsung has been exploring alternative approaches in recent years. Instead of utilizing the challenging and expensive lithium metal foils as the anode material, they have been focusing on the development of lithium-free solid-state batteries. If successful, this approach could significantly simplify the production process compared to using lithium metal foils, which would differentiate SDI from other companies in the field of solid-state batteries. In just a few days ago, SDI announced that all solid-state batteries produced in 2027 would adopt the anode-free method. Then, how could SDI suppress the dendrite formation that occurs during charging and discharging in the anode-free approach? The method is simpler than you think. It is to coat a material in which nanometer-sized silver is mixed with tens of nanometers of carbon black on a copper current collector. As shown in the figure, a composite of carbon and silver is placed as a thin film between the copper current collector and the solid electrolyte. When examining the patent filed by Samsung, as seen in the diagram, it is apparent that the carbon black particles form a composite with a small amount of silver. Carbon black plays a role in preventing the agglomeration of silver particles, while silver enhances the interfacial adhesion with the adjacent solid electrolyte. This is the interpretation they are making based on the patent information. It is true that there have been numerous patents found among companies attempting to develop anode-free solid-state batteries. Where a carbon black layer is inserted between the copper current collector and the solid electrolyte. However, Samsung claims that the inclusion of silver is necessary to achieve a stable interface with the solid electrolyte, thereby increasing the lifespan of the solid-state battery. This is considered the key technology that SDI is pursuing in their development of solid-state batteries. Furthermore, as indicated in the diagram on the right, it appears that simply mixing carbon black without the presence of adsorbed silver results in lower performance. On the other hand, as shown on the left, the performance seems to improve when carbon black is in a form where silver is adsorbed. This indicates the level of effort these companies have invested in optimizing the conditions to achieve the best performance using this technology. And earlier this year, if you look at the contents announced by Samsung in the Nature paper, you can understand why the composite of carbon black and silver acts as a material that suppresses dendrites in all solid-state batteries. When the battery is charged, the lithium metal is formed between the copper collector plate and the composite rather than inside the carbon and silver composite. This time, let's observe the charging process through an animation. The supplied lithium ions through the solid electrolyte traverse the layer composed of carbon black silver composite and form a thin film of lithium metal on the copper foil. Since it is not formed between the solid electrolyte and the composite layer, the resulting lithium metal layer has high uniformity and effectively suppresses dendrite formation while not directly interfacing with the solid electrolyte. As various technological conditions have changed differently from now, as long as Samsung produces all solid-state batteries even if they use other solid-state electrolytes. I believe that anode-free technology is the technology that will not give up until the end. It seems to be a differentiated technology. Of course, having developed the lithium-free electrode technology does not mean that all hurdles in solid-state batteries have been overcome. In Samsung's patents, it is evident that they have dedicated significant efforts to address various challenges. For instance, they have developed techniques to stabilize the solid electrolyte to mitigate performance degradation proportional to exposure time to ambient air for sulfide-based solid electrolytes. They have also focused on coating of cathode material to suppress reactions between the cathode electrode material and the solid electrolyte in Shurin. These efforts demonstrate Samsung's commitment to tackling the complex issues associated with solid-state batteries. In the overall production process of solid-state batteries, the ultra-high pressure process used to stabilize all interfaces in the multilayer structure, including the current collector. 
electrode material and solid electrolyte is considered a significant challenge in terms of productivity. Examining SDI's patents, it appears that they apply tremendous pressure, reaching up to 500 megapascals to form these interfaces. This pressure corresponds to the highest specification of commercially available equipment and is by no means a trivial task. Indeed, the pressure endured by the recently explored submarine during the Titanic wreckage expedition was not sustainable, resulting in its explosion. The compression required to form interfaces by applying pressure to the battery layers, especially when using solid electrolytes, is indeed the most significant challenge to overcome. The pressure required is more than 10 times higher than what the submarine experienced. This poses a major obstacle, particularly in terms of productivity for electric vehicle applications. How SDI plans to address this issue remains to be seen, as they continue to innovate and develop solutions for high-pressure processes. Today's video ends here. Goodbye.